And there we go. Um, we are live. My name is Rob, a.k.a. Lantern Noir, and welcome to Sunday Night Gaming. We're a little bit late. We had um, some miscommunications on who was in with us tonight. Um, Chickadee is out um, with a uh, family emergency, so we're going to send her positive energy. And if she needs to watch so she's distracted, we don't blame you at all. We will try to entertain you um, and not have too much fun because you are a big part of our group and why we have fun. So we will have an appropriate amount of fun to entertain, but not so much to make you feel bad that you're not playing with us. I have, I have no idea what that level of fun is, but it exists, and I feel a great deal of pressure to hit it now. <laughs> um, right. So I... <laughs> yes, Chickadee did grow a beard, um, as it is. Uh, we're going to do a round the table, introduce ourselves, who we are playing tonight, um, and we're going to start with the obvious, which is our newcomer, and then work our way around the table to everybody else. Um, so who are you? Where do we find you? Who are you playing tonight? And and how did they ring in the new year? Oh, oh, durr, the how, pressure's on. How do, how do they say, ha ha, we have completed another so, another solar cycle. The seasons have completely reset themselves. Right. We shall celebrate. Go. All right. Uh, I'm Graybeard or Graybeard Stavron. And tonight I'll be uh, playing Clarton uh, Kishop. Um and they probably celebrated by leaping down into a mugging and punching said bad guy uh, a lot in the face and then laughing heartily and getting the other person on their feet and then disappearing into the shadows. Um, like coats flapping in the wind as he ran run off into, uh, <laughs> into the shadows to find another said mugging. Um, typically... Yeah, that is how he would do it. He's a human fighter. Um, that's he, it for me, GB. That works. We'll come on around to Malik. Hey, I'm Paul, AKA Malik. Uh, I'm playing Drumir Greyblade, a dwarf wealth acquisition expert. Um, and Drumir uh, probably rang in the new year in the yawning portal, uh, trying to make connections, trying to get drunk, and probably having more than he should, which is a challenge for a dwarf, but you know, there's so many people around you. It's a, it's a, it's an occasion. You gotta go all out. Hopefully he found his way to a bet. <laughs> Not quite sure how that turned out. We'll see. He just depends sleep. on how it happens the next morning. Didn't sleep on a random table somewhere. I mean, who knows? Anything's possible. Okay. And Miss Ari. Well, I am Akiwari. I stream here on Twitch sometimes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I am playing as Sharkira, the Dark Elf Wizard, and how Sharkira would probably ring her new year, new year in would be she's going to go visit the tavern and maybe bring a book with her because she doesn't think she'll find great conversation because she's haughty like that. However, I think at the end of the night, she becomes fast friends with some people, has a few ales, and ends up karaoke with the rest of the tavern. So I think that's how she would do it. I'm sorry, the DM's taking a moment to like ponder what Dungeons and Dragons karaoke looks like. <laughs> and it is going to happen by the end of this campaign. Yes. Fantastic. That's that's the kind of thing we we have to do at some point. And last okay. but but absolutely not least, po potentially the single most important member of the party, at least the best dressed for the role, Arwen. <laughs> Um, I am Arwen and I'm playing Chrysanthemum Coriolis. Um, and Chrysanthemum got a bunch of different invitations to different parties because she kind of is in a lot of different social circles. Um, and she made sure to hit up each and every one so nobody's feelings were hurt. Um, and she had at least one drink at each and every one. Um, and hopefully had somebody who was willing to... Um, help get her home or give her some place to crash because we know from past experience that she has a hard time once she's more than one drink, <laughs> one, one drink down. Drinks Yay, halflings. For... One that drinks a lot for a halfling. Absolutely works. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop up the sketch pad really quick. We have a lot of people who are new to uh, Larinor Presents and I don't do these nearly often enough on stream. So if you type exclamation point crit in chat, we'll do a quick giveaway before we start tonight's game off. I'll leave the giveaway open for you to get in. Uh, so exclamation point crit. 
And then while you're doing that, I'll do our recap. Then we'll do the giveaway. We'll do the opening titles. And we're off and running. Um, so the adventure started as our initial four characters were invited to find the friend of one Volo uh, Glothomp. They set out on an adventure throughout Waterdeep, hoping desperately to find him, find the friend. They didn't find the friend, but they did find someone that got mistaken for the friend, found the friend, and then went to collect their money from Volo in order to, uh, well, because they did the job. Volo paid them in full by giving them a tavern. Of course, there was a catch. Uh, said tavern was haunted. So they've had to... Um, they had to find a way to get rid of said ghost. A bit of legwork, interaction with far more voices than I'm used to doing in a single week, uh, led them to the conclusion that the, the ghost herself is the spirit of the madam that once ran a brothel of that particular building and who was killed in a fire there. The reason she was still in the, the building was that she still had not found all of the members of her adopted family. This led the party to go find out if they could find anyone that was missing, and that led them to the simple fact that one Valentina, upon leaving the oldest profession, had struck up the second oldest profession as a rogue. No problem. She hangs out at the yawning portal. No problem. We'll just go tell her that she needs to come check in with her old boss. No problem. What do you mean she just went down into the Undermountain? With Volo. And a few others. This then led us to uh, going into the Undermountain. Once down there, they've made their way through. We have uh, found ourselves thusly at a particular um, junction. The remains of the party that set out have all gathered and uh, now comes the question of what to do. Um, for those that, are, that missed because you just joined, it'll be Cheapskate um, will be one of them and then I'm also going to manually add Shan because I can um, so that you don't miss out on this because you are definitely with us and you're driving. There's no sense you shouldn't be part of it. So exclamation point crit to get in for the quick giveaway before we start the game. We do have one question we have to resolve. How did Clarton end up tagging in with this group? What motivated him as he watched uh, these three intrepid heroes, a dark elf, wizard, a halfling, cleric, and a dwarven rogue, descend into the Undermountain? I am open for ideas because, uh, again, uh, you know, I just got here like 10 minutes ago. So... Um, <laughs> Uh, um, I would imagine somebody knows me and they needed, they needed the, a tank, not a tank. Cause I am an archer, not a frontline fighter, but, uh, maybe they needed some muscle and they thought that guy's got a sword. Um, <laughs> uh, it could have been you, it, from the sounds of it, from your, uh, your new year's that, uh, character is a bit of a, uh, a self-made hero as it were like a folklore kind of guy <laughs> yeah. looking out for the little guy um yeah. and as we were sort of like well we need to go down there we don't have enough time to wait for them to go back but it's super dangerous and you're like well you guys are just going down and coming right back right i mean i could you know help you out there sounds you amazing in the right state, place at yeah. the right time yeah perfect or uh, yeah overheard you guys going all right we've got to go and <laughs> Leaves us just, you know, that leaves us one man short. Perfect. Exactly. That works for me. I like it. We will explain the absence of Re of Relona as a um, an injury on the way in, just in order to kind of kind of cover that. Um, shout out to Ear, who's one of my regulars, who's been keeping people busy in chat by pulling up the reroll rules. Uh, anyone who's present tonight can influence the outcome of the game um, a couple of different ways. You can add 100 bits into the Book of Fate. Every 100 counts as a reroll the party can use. Party, not individual player, can use as they wish. They start off with two, and now they have another, they have four more. 
Thank you, Ear, for that. We appreciate that. You are always a very kind and generous supporter. So for those that weren't sure how to do it, do what he did. Um, and that'll give the party some re-rolls to use as needed, because I always make combat encounters way harder than they have to be. And uh, to a perfect timing. Also, there is a sound alert you can use. Um, it is guaranteed. Nobody can refuse it. Um, but I should warn you, it's a little... It's a few more bits. Uh, but you do trigger a sound alert when you do it. Which, again, we will drop what we're doing because there's a big loud noise. Or at least I will because I can hear the big loud noise. I don't think the other players can. Um, which is probably for the better. Um, that's everybody. One last call for the for the giveaway before we start. And then we'll go. Okay. That's it. Oh, wait. I have to do the official. I mean, how does, how does he do it? All right. Countdown in five, four, wait, three. Two, one. I'll get better at that. All right, Shan, when you get off the road, send a whisper or get a message via Arwen, um, and we will uh, we'll get you in there. Uh, you get your choice of stickers, either a Lantern Noir um, dice sticker, the rainbow sticker, or a new Convergence cast sticker. You let me know, and uh, we will make that happen. Uh, we're going to run the opening titles, and then when we get back, we're going to play some D&D. I did enjoy it. You did very well with the four, three. Yeah, two. four, three. I, I think, yeah, I know that's, I can't, that's kind of difficult. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, no one does a countdown like the amazing Kraken Inferno, who, you know, Agreed. I'm going to, before we roll, because we have to give, we got to give somebody a second, because there's always somebody, isn't there? But hopefully this works. Hmm. I miss. I typed something wrong. I'll look it up later. But yeah, Kraken Inferno. He's like the Kevin Bacon of of Twitch. Everybody knows somebody through them. So let's play some D and D. And welcome, first time chatters, uh, to Tank Red and Lord of Oblivion. Glad to have you hanging out with us tonight. And Bjorn, indeed, D and D fun. So, the scene, if you were, we, we will, a hallway in the Undermountain. Your standard. 10 by 10 foot dungeon. A passageway leads off the main hall, equally sized, at the end of which is a pedestal upon west... Bleh. Hang on. When in doubt, more whiskey. On top of which rests a massive jeweled necklace. Looking past the pedestal, you see a collection of iron tip spikes pointing out the wall directly at you. In this crossroads, you find yourselves in a particularly curious company. The four of you have come upon, he said, switching to his notes, another adventuring party. One Valentina, a young human rogue that you have been in search of. Volo, who needs no introduction. A short woman of thin stature, leaning heavily on a walking stick, dressed in the robes of one who knows her martial arts. And one fighter, 
about as wide as he is tall and probably, well, he hasn't said much yet. Either he's the strong, silent type, or he just takes a very long time to bring together letters into words. It's hard to say. As a reminder, you also passed the last member of their pod party, Audrey Anksborn, you recall her name being, having been crushed by a death trap. So the party is down one already. And that is where our scene begins. Bolo's looking down the house, but that's, that's what we're here for. Look, it is exactly as it should be on the map. I mean, yes, there were a couple of other turns we had to make, and some of this wasn't completely accurate, but what can be in the Undermountain, and that's what we need to get. I think we had uh, just come upon them and said, oh, hey, it's you, we found you, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well. Yes. Um. I can't pay you, but we're glad you're here. How's the tavern working out? Funny you should ask. Chrysanthemum's uh, just gonna like level her finger like up at him and go, you! <laughs> Me? What? I paid you. That tavern is far worth more than 400 gold. Except that it's cursed, or at least haunted. But that's why we're here. Not for you, I say like pointing at Bolo. And slightly angle over to the road. Valentina. Valentina. Uh, but for you, as I understand it, you were a uh, you were involved with that tavern before it burned down. She kind of glances at um, the monk and then up at the fighter. I don't think I know what you're talking about. There is a particular woman haunting that tavern. One uh, would probably, I probably should have actually read my notes here. <laughs> right? And this Looks kids is why DMs arm. don't write a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> what was her name? Sorry. Uh, that's a good question. What is it? Oh, I have it. A kinder DM would not make him oh, roll an intelligence uh, check to remember. Sophia Starcrossed. If I'm, nice I'm save. Look at my notes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, one <laughs> Sophia Starcrossed, who has a vested interest, it would appear, in ensuring that you are safe, he says, uh, uh, artfully discussing the exact nature of why she was there. Um, <clears throat> has a, a vested interest beyond, from beyond the grave, it would seem, to ensure that you are safe. So, if you are willing to come with us, uh, we can have that sorted out before the morning, at which point this man, I point at Bolo's, uh, generous payment will not become null and void. We well, have come down here to... How, how could my payment become safety. null and void? I, I, the contracts were all signed. That property is yours. Unless it's haunted by the uh, second 48 hours after we have received it. Well, yeah, the city's going to take control of it and demolish it if we can't get the spirit out of it. Yeah, well, I, I, I didn't know it was haunted. I mean, those were rumors. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure that you are very good at trying to convince us otherwise. But the point of the matter is we have a spirit that we need to otherwise remove. And there's an expensive way to do that and a cheap and probably nicer way to do that. So that's why we're here in the Undermountain. I'm going to turn to Valentina and say, Madam Sophia gave her life to make sure you were okay. She needs to see that you survived before she can pass on in peace. She kind of... And we can have our building back. <laughs> she, she kind of, you can see her kind of flinch a bit and glance to either side at the monk and the, the fighter. And the monk kind of like, takes a second to kind of consider that and then looks up at Valentina. Didn't Starcross, didn't she run a brothel? And he looks down at her. I don't know. You, 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 Adam I, Sophia said you were a good friend of hers. I, 
I'm kind of trying to leave some wiggle room for her to gracefully. You must have been good friends. She thought very highly of you. It was. I, I remember I was friends with a young man who used to pop in there all the time. Nice. Accurate. Okay. I, I tried to put that part of my life behind me after the fire. Um, we need you to, to help too, us help it, Sophia put it behind her too. Yeah, not to be too indelicate about this, but maybe this is a conversation that can happen above the undermountain, in the overmountain, if you will. Uh, I say kind of like looking around. <laughs> <laughs> it's It's been clear staling since we came in here. A few scraps with some undead, a little bit with some gelatinous cube at one corner. This this has been but like a Sunday afternoon stroll. I'm going to jerk my thumb and some stroll for her it turned out to be. Oh, yes. Most unfortunate. And they and, all, and it's like and all three of them, the, the main party, all nod in unison. Most unfortunate. <laughs> and Clarton po po points with an arrow, and he's like, and yeah, that's a trap. Like, right. That's a trap. Um, you know, he totally. <laughs> Are, you're pointing at the... Um, the, necklace the necklace and the spikes. <laughs> but this, this is what we came here to get. We can't leave without it. And two, two people look like wizards, right? One of our people and one of their people? Uh, just one of ours. Okay. Yes. All right. You got that thing where you can reach out and grab stuff? Maybe help? Do I? <laughs> Let me see. Uh, Mage what? Hand is what, to what he is referring What is it? Yeah. Mage Hand, a cantrip. Yeah. The DM is looking to help you. Thank you. As well. As, as everyone's you know, immediately going to your character sheet, which, by the way, if you're watching us on Twitch, uh, the overlay should be active. You, too, can look at her character sheet. Ooh. I know. That's fancy. It is fancy. And I double-checked to make sure the right overlay was in, the right one was set up for everybody tonight. Uh, it would appear that Mage Hand is not one of the spells you have. She's more of a, Shakira kind of, I always thought it was more of the blow it up and then pick things up attitude <laughs> as opposed Absolutely to the right. man manipulated at distance. And if Pond were hanging out here, um, her players have figured out alternate uses for Mage Hand. Mm -hmm. Mo most <laughs> of them to be done in the privacy of my own home. Well, I thought that was the whole point of Mage Hand. I thought the, the utility was the alternate use. <laughs> the secondary. <laughs> no, that, I that's like the I'm bug, not the feature. playing wrong this whole time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Very versatile. <laughs> Somehow I didn't have Arwen pegged as the one that was going to make that joke. I've played with too many bards. I... <laughs> mm -hmm. it's... Uh... I've been ruined. Uh... My brain goes places it didn't used to. <laughs> hey, hey, that's a that's a that's a Western culture thing. Not all clerics take an oath of celibacy. Let's put that one out there. I mean, I am a trickster cleric, but <laughs> fair enough. Um, I'm gonna avoid making a joke about the religious tricks that one can. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you make that joke. Um, so the best uh, he was alluding to uh, you having mage hand, but you don't have it. So what you say? The the fighter Zico looks up. I can just go get it. Are we in the line of fire of the spikes? Uh, you don't have to be. Yeah, that's we. Uh, anybody of our group that is, I kind of like try to pull pull them back. Like, uh, uh, maybe maybe uh, Miss uh, Valentina and I can have a look at it as the professional wealth acquirers here. Uh, sure. You can. So, um, make your way down there i think uh i miss the good old days where i'd say roll check for traps yeah i mean it'd be either perception or investigation depending on how you want to do it and which dm wants to do what let's go perception 
cool. That one's better for me. Um, <laughs> I have it at disadvantage for some reason. I don't know why. You do? I, I think you're looking at the wrong character sheet. I am looking at the wrong character sheet. Yeah, give 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 Ari her character sheet back and look at yours. You know, uh, <laughs> investigation would be better for me, so I can yeah, make yeah. an argument for looking for logical uh, trip uh, uh, pressure plates and or trip lines and that sort of thing. So you're going to test a bunch of things. I, look in the logical places. Is I use so logic perception. to dictate. You'll poke it with a stick and see if it blows if you, up. If you want to go experimenting, you can investigate, but that will involve a lot more interaction with the area. You are welcome to investigate if that's what you want to do. <laughs> we'll, we'll roll perception. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, what can I say? I'm the kind of guy. Oh, I should have those up on top so that everyone else can see your roll. Um, wow. Okay, then. That's a roll. Starting out strong. Yes, give me your high rolls now. <laughs> Get them out of the way. They're can trips, not can't trips. Jeez. Oh. Okay, so as you're looking down this, this hallway, um, you can spot about 40 feet from the end of the hall the grout in the stone walls is seamed. Every welt is very well maintained, except this one particular spot, this one line outline around it. But there doesn't appear to be any like noticeable pressure plates before that seam, and you don't see any telltale signs of one after it either. I appreciate that you were able to work dwarven stone cutting into it, or stone sight, or yeah, that was absolutely my intention. Yeah, let's let's go with that. Yeah, um, I I will point that out to our uh, to Miss Valentina. Uh, so, either something was added here, or it's it's definitely not part of the actual original construction. So, if it's going to be trapped, that's probably where. Right? Do you see that? She kind of stops and looks at it, and it nods. Um, she reaches over and kind of taps the the ground a couple of times with the the tip of her dagger it doesn't she looks at you I don't, I don't see a pressure plate or anything mm. yeah but it's this has got to be trapped right like there's no way this thing isn't trapped I, I don't see any other trap uh, uh, I'd like to take an investigation at it to take a little bit more hands on and or Okay. Uh, uh, practical application. By all means, roll that investigation. I'm going to get cure wounds ready to go. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> okay. Um, you start to look around the different things, kind of whittle around inside the crack, kind of slide. You know, there's no pressure plate, so you slide over it a little bit and start to look at a few other things. Um, and then you start to go down a few more feet in to see if you can spot things. You start tossing around rocks, pebbles. You got that, those, those call traps you carry. You know, scatter a few of them somewhere and see if anything interesting happens. You take a few more steps down to pick them back up when nothing does. And then you hear, a, you feel more than you hear something give. Just get this deck save ready. The ground starts to rapidly swing down away from the uh, the horizontal. Oh, boy. So it's as though if this is the hallway, mm -hmm. it's now this. Yep. The pedestal is right there. Oh. Oh. And those spikes that were horizontal out of the wall pointed at you. Yes. Are now vertical pointed at you. Uh, where am I specifically? Right there. Uh, I see. I'm going to attempt Roll to a not check. fall into the pit. <laughs> into the spikes. Hey, Kate, upon, yeah, we can talk on Discord some more about that. 16. I don't suppose this counts as a door. <laughs> I, 
I can't wait. What? Oh, to yeah. <laughs> Amaturgy might be a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> um, yeah, you make the quick grab um, to to grab onto something before you plummet um, down under the spikes below. Um, at the same time, Valentina starts to lose. You know, she's right next to you. She reaches with one hand for the. Um, the lip and from her other hand you watch as she drops a glowing coin that she was using for light for herself and as it falls towards the pedestal it passes through a, a for a moment what looks like a, a force field that appears the coin drops through it and as it passes through there's a flash and the coin goes dark and clatters down onto the spikes below Let me... First thing I do is say, well, I'm okay. Well, we don't know how no. she is. Give me 10 seconds to pull up my dice yep. so we can see how she fared coming off this little cliff. I just have to open a different campaign so I can get to my dice roller. Uh, I can use these characters. Um, view. Because they won't come. They shouldn't come through. So I can quietly roll here behind the screen. Physically roll a die. But that would involve going to get dice. And I mean, Google uh, lets you roll dice, I guess. I it know. does. It does. But then there's that nice there's there's no neat little uh you know clackety clack sounds for the for everyone on stream. Very I want true. them I want them to hear me rolling dice on your behalf. Right. Okay. Um she actually latches her hand onto your wrist as she's hanging there. I think um, I think we can safely say there's a trap. Yep. <sighs> well, I I think we're. Uh, so so wait so she's got her hand on the lip and then nope. is holding me or she's is... holding on to you. You're holding right. the lip. She dropped the magic coin through some kind of a barrier that demagicked it. Right. Okay. Um, little help. I'm going to run over <laughs> to the lip and like, like just on instinct. And I'm going to like grab hold of whatever part of Drumir I can grab onto. Okay. You I have no strength, but. <laughs> yeah, what, I, I was going to say, please don't, please don't pull my fingers off the grip. I'd be the first one holding on to you. If, yeah. Whether it helps or not. Um, just, just for giggles, go ahead and roll me that strength check. All right. If Strange. I can't like pull, at least I could like try and stabilize mm -hmm. while yelling, "Somebody get over here!" Uh, Larton's grabbing his rope. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, oh. God. If it was um, a one, I could have rerolled. <laughs> um, that is literally the worst you could. That's have That's the worst thing that could have happened. <laughs> does the party want to? Does anyone want to kick in a reroll, or is this about to get really interesting? I think. That, that would be a good one to re-roll. Yeah. I'm a little biased, mind you. <laughs> oh, 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 Polymorph has That's got fair. you guys already. He's using the once every 45 minutes. Hey. He, he's adding, oh, wait, he's adding to it. He's adding to it. All right, we got that. All right. It Yay. is still a fail, but it is not nearly as disastrous. It's not catastrophic. Too late, already redeemed. No take backs. <laughs> What's the reroll? There's one that says reroll, I believe. There used to be one. Um, he said double checking while we're talking. Um, right. Manager words and challenges. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Reroll, 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 reroll that. Yeah, it's, it should be yeah. right next to uh, add to the roll. It mm -hmm. says reroll that. And Oh, that should be a lot longer than that, though. Hang on. While I'm in here, I'll do this really quick. Pink. And then I'll do this, and uh, one per stream. Yep, cool. And that one should be, let me, yep, okay, cool. Sweet, all right, that's all taken care of. I'm back to that screen. Um, boom, uh, Chrysanthemum grabs on as she's laying on her belly, 
gets her hands tightly onto um, Dramir's wrist at the top, and then his fingers slip. The good news is Chrysanthemum hasn't let go. The bad news is she's now sliding stomach first out over the lip. And yelling. A loud metal murder. scraping noise. <laughs> yes, the the armor and plate mail on stone. <laughs> yeah, um, not plate scale mail. Ezekiel's like coming up the hall as well. Is 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 Clarton coming or is he keeping at range? Well, the uh, uh, they've got a big mountain of a lump of a fighter, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, I had gotten my rope out, and I'll I'll like huck one end at him in this next round basically like <laughs> hold on tight and Clarton's gonna run and like jump out over the thing and kind of come down to get grab Valentina at the bottom of the the pile oh. to take the pressure off all the way up so he's gonna he's gonna throw himself <laughs> into the pit and kind of repel to grab the bottom person <laughs> because <laughs> he's our target <laughs> <laughs> Without her, there's still ghosts in the thing. So you know, I appreciate your attention to detail. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm kind I of started like off upset. thinking like I that's the second most that. helpful thing you could have done, but like I, I see it now. I it's see amazing. It. I approve. Wonderful. So, acrobatics check by chance, <laughs> please. Please. I kind of figured um, we're gonna Proxima also popped the the re-roll that which is a, a once per hour. So we're going to see if you need it or not. If you don't need it, I'm going to refund it. All right. Big dice, big dice. 16. You don't need it, so I'm going to refund that. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so yeah. Clarton jumps out, spins down. There's a moment where you 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 have that... Clarton has that, that tenth, tenth of a second thought of, did I do a double square or did I do a granny triple <laughs> right before everything goes tight? Yeah. <laughs> and whatever it is, you, he comes right down and kind of like almost knocks the wind out of Valentina as you like wrap onto her against the, the side of the, the pit, which was a hallway. Now it's a pit. Um, Very clever in engineering, in fact. Thank you. I'll tell you more about it later. I take no credit for this. <laughs> so am I still sliding or am I yes. stable? Okay. You are still sliding. I'm sliding and you're you're now helping. like you know, your your chest is now like over the gap. There's like a moment where it's like pink. Um and you're looking straight down past Malik at a pedestal with a big like it, it the pedestal was a nice neat angle before it went down, it's still a nice neat angle. There's still a <laughs> gorgeous necklace sitting there. And then I just think, lots okay. of spikes behind it. I think Shakira is going to try and run over and at least grab on to Chrysanthemum's legs so she doesn't fall all the way over. <laughs> or her uh, ankles. Her ankles. Love that the party has become a human rope. <laughs> As needed. Um, it's like the barrel of, the barrel of monkeys. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm picturing at the moment. Like um, you get into position, you grab on, and you start to to pull, and the, the monk grabs the other one of Chrysanthemum's legs. Mm. And you start to, to walk her backwards. Um, I mean, we could just lower ourselves down and grab the necklace at this point. <laughs> one thing at a time, please! They're like, no one, care. no one cares about me anymore. We just... We're getting the lady, we're getting the necklace, we're out of here. <laughs> oh, no. You start to... You start... <sighs> You're able to pull Chrysanthemum back. Malik gets his fingers on the, the lip. Um, you hear the, the booming voice, voice of the fighter. Do you want me to pull you up or send you down? Up first, please. <laughs> right. And he starts to to pull up and back and up and back um, and working its way back. Um, Malik, I would love you to roll me a perception check with disadvantage for uh, Drumir as you pull yourself up over the, the lip. I'm going to give you a chance to see this. Is that disadvantage? Yes, please. 
You're not really into a deep investigation mode at the moment, but I'm just oh, I, curious I gotcha. if you spot it. And of all the people in the party, you are the most likely to? Okay. Six. Works for me. Works for me. You found something. It was a pit trap. Yep. <laughs> Turns out it was a pit trap. Turns out it was a pit trap. Um, and you all back up on that lip standing there. And you look down and Volo kind of leans over and goes, Ooh. huh, the light coin has gone out. Well, that's problematic. That's problematic. Yeah, that's part of the problem. Well, that would imply there's an anti-magic barrier there. Yeah, no, I'm still... Never mind. I'm fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <sighs> right. So, so, how do we get the necklace now? Well, assuming it's an anti-magic barrier and not an anti-everything barrier, you just lower one of us down, I guess? Preferably someone light. And immediately he turns to Valentina. Valentina is a human, right? Yep. And and, and <laughs> Clarton will be like, no, ghost person needs somebody else. I, I was going to recommend one of the halflings. Sorry. Stantham um, kind of looks down. I give it a shot. The, the monk kind of goes... Are you sure? I mean, he's literally not wearing, you know, 40 pounds of steel. I mean, that's true. Well, that's the, the fighter's the he, the, the monk's a she. Oh, I do not have that in my notes. No, she, she takes some, you know, if you, when you get to introductions, uh, her name was Genazel. Genazel, okay. Okay. Well, I did play to level 20 in EverQuest 2. Oh, fun. I'll, you, I'll look over the monk and go... Yeah, you go first. <laughs> well, I um, mean, she's prob she's not wearing armor, correct? Right. The monk, yeah, she's probably going to be lighter. Scratching his generous beard, Drumir says, I can't imagine we have any sort of small animal we'd be willing to risk to test that whole anti-everything field theory. Clarton's looking at you like, what, what did you just say? <laughs> oh, no, it, it, it snuffed out the magic in the light coin. So uh, hopefully it doesn't snuff out the magic in of life in the, whoever touches it. I'm thinking we could test that with something that's not one of us. Janzel um, considers that. You're right. The cleric should go first. Wait, what? <laughs> Is that an insult, sir? Um, I'd like to point out that if uh, things do go poorly, that the cleric is the one that would make them better. That's assuming someone gets hit. I don't get hit. So you are going to go down in there. I, um. <sighs> Smiles. <laughs> Grabs the rope, starts to wrap it around her waist. You appreciate your legs. courage. I, mm. <laughs> I simply acknowledge a more viable argument when presented. It's like a math problem. It's like a logic, like a word problem. Mm -hmm. like a, it's, a, it's a puzzle. It just happens to be a particularly pointy one. The, um, she starts to you know, lean back over and the fighter starts to lower her down and she pushes out and comes you know swings out and drops down swings on they kind of you know he lets he lets it out lets it out she's right about the level of the pedestal when i need everyone who's standing at the edge to give me a quick perception check which doesn't have to be all of you it can be most of you oh, that's well, the one i want i want that one let's get all of them up there on the screen nice Jeez. I'm keeping, I'm keeping Ooh, yeah. Valentina back, so I'm not <laughs> at the edge anymore. Who knows if you can see anything anyways? You don't have eyeballs. Well, I mean, you do have eyeballs. You don't have dark vision eyeballs. Yes, exactly. Although, then again, neither does Chrysanthemum. 
don't know. We got a torch. It's fine. It's whatever. An unfortunate point we've had to deal with more than once. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so there are all those. Cool. Um, Chrysanthemum sees it, or rather hears it, just as um, Genzel puts her hand on the uh, the pedestal where the, the gem's necklace is, you hear a high-pitched whizzing sound. Like some kind of a machine spitting to life. Oh! Um, and then do, you... Do you say anything other than that or just hope? Well, I, I, like, do I... Can I tell where it's coming from? It's coming from the ground right at the edge of the lip. It almost sounds like um, a really small, fast uh, uh, wood saw from then a mill I'm spinning. Point at the spot and go, oh! <laughs> Anybody else hear that? <laughs> I'm like. And as you stand there I, going, I, I, can't, Wait, I can only what? hear it. I'm not seeing anything, yep. right? So I'm just like. You watch as a small circular noise. blade pops out of the lip of the uh, at the hinge and fly down the length of it. Oh boy! Right into the rope, holding Genazel up. Ah shit! What's everybody gonna do in that moment? Um. Slow motion. No. Yeah. Shall we go Except around the that. table? Uh, <laughs> I'll take. I'll take first person to speak. Since, since y'all sat there for a good five seconds, dumb silent. Okay, it's it's like a little it's like a little saw blade. Yeah, it goes right through that hemp rope like it's like butter. Okay. Um, <laughs> I gotta dive and grab the rope again. Um, okay. Uh, that sounds like that sounds like an I mean, action. I, yeah. I would like to do that as well. But quick question: Is it? Eight strength. Is, blade, is it going back and forth, or did it just come across, it across once? once. Done? Okay. Okay. As you've seen so okay. far, if, maybe if, it has to come somebody, back. No. If, no. So is it is it still like is it still visible? Um. Or did not, it go somewhere? Not in the time that you have to react. I need uh, that dexterity check to grab that rope. Uh, Drumir, did you say you were going to go for the rope? <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'll go for the rope then. <laughs> uh, a dex check. Sure. Okay. Shall we both? <laughs> Competing dex checks. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, dear. Boy. Did it? No. Okay, it... so. Oh, okay. Did that it was go? a perception. Oh. I haven't seen not... the dex yet. Okay. I'm Although, you know what? On it is... Oh, there oh, we go. You talk... That was a oh. dex check. Okay. I was clicking on the wrong place. Okay, cool. I was going to say, I could just take what you rolled for your d20 and count that. But I clicked on the wrong. You rolled thing. the same thing, so it checks out. Uh, okay. So Chrysanthemum jumps forward, grabs onto the rope with both hands, um, and is now holding the other half plane up. Once again, on her belly, looking straight down at a bunch of spikes. Um, having failed to catch the rope, um, while he is otherwise on his stomach here. Rumir is going to attempt to disable the saw trap, if that is possible. Oh, good idea. It's not like it's going to come back and slice your cleric in half. I mean, who knows what can happen? Um, so, what would that be? A dexterity with proficiency with the use of my thieves' tools? Sounds good to me. You know, actually, I uh, also have mason's tools. Ooh. Of which oh. I am proficient. Um, Double proficiency. I mean, I would whatever you want me to roll. I'll roll I, it. We'll just are... add a little bit to it. Really? I'll lower your difficulty since you have all the appropriate tools for this particular situation more than you probably should. More than I probably should. How do I actually roll uh, these tools? I think we just add a lot to it. We just. Uh, oh, I think Graybeard. Oh, yeah, you can use a, a stat, a stat roll generally if you push on your stat, and then add your proficiency bonus. 
So if it's if the tools use dexterity or strength or whatever they use, yeah, yeah. that's what you would use and then the, add your pro proficiency. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was trying to figure out if there was a way I could do it all in one, but uh, yeah. we can do I can figure that out later. So here's my dexterity check for that. Okay. 19. Not that you need all those proficiencies. I can just do it very quickly, maybe. Yeah. In fact, you actually pull the blade out. You have nice. this, this really nice little spinning saw blade. I will put it on the, the you know, floor next to me. <laughs> and then uh, kind of reach over and try to assist uh, the uh, uh, halfling next to me. Okay. You grab onto the halfling. The fighter grabs onto the halfling. I can't fix the half lean up. <laughs> it's a very similar, you know, second verse, same as the first. Yeah. And it starts to kind We're of We're going to be back. so bruised when we get out of here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty much just got one hand in the back of your armor, and he's just yeah. lifting you by that. Here, um, you've got a nice handhold. And as, as Genesil goes past it, she grabs onto the necklace. Um, and as she does, there's a moment where you feel a gust of wind erupt up out of the pit and just flood down that hall and spread through the dungeon behind you. Volo's torch actually flutters a bit in it. Just oh, wind. Oh, I don't like that. Ooh. Oh. That bodes poorly. I recommend haste. Haste is good. Haste is good. Rounds are on me once we get out. <sighs> Pull me up. <laughs> yep. And you now have everyone standing in the hallway. You've got the jeweled necklace, which Volo quickly wraps up in a, a silk cloth and tucks into a bag. And uh, you have an opportunity to get out of there. I suggest we take that opportunity. I am all with you there. <laughs> Is that what we call it? Is that what we're going with? What's that? <laughs> Later <Chara>. action. Flatulence. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did think it, but I'm glad someone else said it. <laughs> A stale wind blows through the halls. <laughs> Blair takes his turn to fart. Mm -hmm. The lesser man would make that particular joke. Mm -hmm. What the heck? I'll be the lesser man. Mm -hmm. um, you start to make your way back out whence you came. At the first intersection, obviously, you're just following the arrows in reverse. As Valentina led her group in, she marked every intersection. You just have to follow those right back out again which is why all of you stop at the second intersection where there are two marks indicating the incoming path. Uh-oh. Thoughts? Clarton looks at Valentina <laughs> questioningly. I, I only left one mark at every intersection of how, to, to mark how we came in. Certainly wasn't there when we came in. I hear the, I look, looking at the rest of the, under mountain moves around. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's just an illusion. But if it was an illusion set there by someone, perhaps they'd be trying to funnel us on they would have erased the other one. So. Volo looks to the right. Right is right. We go this way. Wait. Like, just because it's... That doesn't seem so. <laughs> <laughs> like he just puts his head in his yeah. head. <laughs> Is there a chance that we, you know, any of us can remember? Anyone have a specific feat? Like, I don't know, uh, out, um, what's it called? Not an outsider. Uh... Servant? No, they're, uh, it's a background. Most barbarians are it. Uh, Out, outrider? Something like Outlander. that, yeah. Outlander, Outlander. yeah. Yeah. Or... Uh, Any other familiarities with where you are? Yeah, or... with the uh, 
keen mind feet or anything highlander that's that's yeah polymath is a different thing (laughs) no one in the group took the highlander background oh uh although it's always good for you know one-on-one combat Hmm. um any other ideas you want to kick in rather than just taking the advice of the the aged and wise expert on monsters and other things man if any of those were true um (laughs) (laughs) Well, it can't be both of them. It's got to be one of them. At least we should mark the one that we took. And if we don't come across another one, backtrack. Circle it and put your initials this time. (laughs) That's all he's got. (laughs) He's a fighter. He didn't go to school. (laughs) Maybe I can examine the stone and see if it's like like it's wood, like wood grain, grain is in a particular way, but like the stone version thereof. Stone grain. Know, I'm I'm reaching here. <laughs> <laughs> I would say maybe an extra special mark because what, what yeah. are our other options aside from just choosing one and hoping we don't die? Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> okay. Valentina marks, you know, takes out a bit of chalk, marks the wall again, puts a few more you know, infos around the arrow, identifying the direction you went, mm. and you start off back down the that particular hallway. There's a few more twists and turns, and most of the other intersections you pass um, only have one mark at them. Oh, so we might have picked the right one then. You maybe. might have picked the right one. It's hard to say. <laughs> Um, as you work your way back little by little, um, you come around one corner and you see this, this blood pool in the middle of the hallway. Apropos of nothing else. Um, you take a few steps towards it and you recognize a stone column circle in the ceiling directly above the blood pool. Ah, Oh, I think we have returned to. Our dear friends. But no body? No, no body. Well, I don't like that at all. Yeah, that's not great. Are there like tracks or drag marks? Smear of the bloody handprint. No, just a pool of blood. Great. Um, I guess be on our guard and avoid that spot. Because that is definitely a trap there. Yes. Okay, you work your way, you know, kind of everyone walks around it. There's a moment where Volo's about to go walking straight through it. Oh, Lord. And, <laughs> and Ezekiel is sort of like, just puts his hand on the shoulder, just pushes. So he kind of goes around it. <sighs> He's looking at the map. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, he can, he can walk through it if he wants. He can just hand over the necklace first, if you would like. But, you know, well, that would be really thought. tragic if he got crushed in that with the necklace and everything. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if it wasn't a trap, I would have just been happy to just let him traipse through the blood. <laughs> but. Wow, the shade. Uh, I am so not happy with Volo. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have good reason. There was a lot of paperwork involved last time you guys were. There's so much paperwork. <laughs> My hand is still cramping from all the signatures. Oh, good point, Paul. Well, what initials. if Solo does what the last body did? Whatever that is. Oh. We'd solve the mystery. Then there'd be two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want two of them? As you continue to make your way back out of the Undermountain, um, you turn another corner and you're fairly confident that there's like one more bend up ahead and you're out. You've made it back to the portal. This looks familiar. Oh, yeah. Um, You come around the corner, and you can see where the hallway goes down 60 feet, and you can see where it opens up into the the chamber. The the, what should be orange torches that usually light it, however, are casting off a blue-green color, creating long shadows. There's a figure standing directly in the middle of the hallway at Uh the entrance. 
could you describe the shape and or size of this figure? Um, a little hard to pick out at this distance. Um, a lot of features. It's backlit. Right. Is it um, is it human sized? It at is least? human sized. It's wearing a black black robes and the hoods pulled up. Good first step. And as you start to walk up, a hand goes off to the side, and you can see a white cuff as it conjures up that same colored light in its hand. Um, and Valentina whispers, I see you. Oh, God, that's Audrey. Oh, I had a feeling that was coming. Um, what? what as is you, she dead? As you say, as, as Shakira asks that, the head quickly turns to look at you over its shoulder. They left me for dead. But I'm not. Your doom can never be killed. As she turns towards you, it's the whole body is white. Actually, kind of more of a bluish because it's lit by the the magic energy in her hands. If I do not escape the Undermountain alive, neither will you. She (laughs) she (laughs) points at you, and as she does, swarms of limbs start to claw their way down the hall towards you, flooding in from the exit chamber. Oh, no. I'm going to need y'all to roll initiative. The good news is the combat map, I didn't even like make one for this because it is a 10 by 10 hallway that goes out 60 feet. Yep. But as a courtesy, I'll go ahead and I will first, I will reset my pen so I'm not using the entire monitor for it. Or all three monitors, I should say, because it defaults that every time I reboot my computer. I mean, I'm not great at drawing, but I can't draw on that kind of a space. That's all I know. You might. Can you zoom in or? Yeah, I did that. I just had to actually, you know, actually here, let me better position yeah. that and then we'll get you guys on the initiative tracker. Wait, too well, many the gauntlet. windows open. Yup. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to rumble. Uh, I love my chat. You guys are like all the fun of this game besides the players. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. The players are pretty awesome. But the fact that we have such a great interactive chat for our games, you know, I hope if I, I hope when I hit the Matt Mercer numbers, I'm still able to engage with you guys the way we do. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Ah, nailed it. Oh, those are moments that just feel good as a DM. Okay. Combat screen is up. All right, let's get the initiatives in here. Um, let's see here. Um, oh, wait, she's a monster. She's not a good guy. Point of view, I, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. She's one, two, three. Okay. Combat starts. We put the initiative rolls in. Chrysanthemum comes in with an eight. Uh, Drew Mir comes in with 19. Sharkira comes in with a three. You know, you're just pacing yourself. You want you want to get a read for the field before anything else happens. Exactly with that critical critical moment. There's that. I'm checking to make sure it looks good on the output. It absolutely does. Um, uh, bink, and then let me put the hallway here so we can put everybody on it. Slips the DM100 and dimension doors. I'd allow it. I'd allowed it. <laughs> Carlton, Dramir, Chrysanthemum, Sharkira. Meanwhile, behind you, you've got Valentina, Volo, Genazel, and Ezekiel was running rear guard. 
in this corner. <laughs> there's Audrey. And there's one, two, and three. What is Clarton doing? Uh, I'm going to, he whips around his, uh, his long bow and lets, uh, lets an arrow fly and then we'll, uh, action surge and do that again. So, um, what are you shooting the arrow at? The thing's face. Um, <laughs> the, the monsters. Yeah, the necromancer's face. Okay. Um, Point of clarity. All right, that's going to hit. Give me damage. Oh, awesome. Okay. And... <sighs> okay. Um, Not bad. Um, it's, yeah, damage. it's damage. Second, second shot. Okay. Pool, that'll hit. That's better. All right, so 11 on that second one. All right. A good two fly. Good opening. Ah. To which Dramir adds what? No, I was saying I figured out how to get my... Oh, is it my turn? It is your turn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to... This full screen so I can actually see... In that. Nuts. I, I've managed to find myself a, a, a token, but uh, it cannot shrink down smaller than that. So, anyways, uh, yes. Um, <laughs> we have two problems. We have the necromancer and all the things coming at us. Uh, at present, it seems like it is probably the best idea to go after the necromancer, even though that's I'm not going to be able to get sneak attack. Uh, you know, we take what we can get. So, I'm going to short bow her. Uh, good news, I critically missed. Yes, you did. Yep. And that's my turn. Actually, I'm going to uh, bonus to... I don't know, can I... I'm going to dart around the corner here. and Like, uh, retreat around the corner? Yeah. And then uh, use my bonus action to hide. To see if I can't attempt to get an advantage next turn. Bravely runs away. Yep. Pushing Dodges, the, you know. Pushing the monk bravely, out of the way. Bravely runs away away. Okay. That's, a, that's an action. <clears throat> Boink. The swarm of limbs uh, starts to make its way down the hallway. Um, it's going to basically it, they, it has no attack, so it's just they're the two of them that are going right now are just going to take a dash action because that's all it's got. Uh, da, 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 da. So there's one, and there's three. As they immediately start to swarm up over. Um, Chrysanthemum and Clarton. The good news is it's not going to hurt anybody. This turn. This turn. Okay. Now life gets really interesting. Um, Audrey at the far end of the hallway begins to chant and summon. And you can feel all of the death that has occurred in the Undermountain coming to support her. Oof. And I suspect there's a lot of it. Avalanche of appendages. Yes. Um, that's one way to look at it. Because um, she's going to pop this spell. And the... May I sort of... Oh. Hmm. Okay, so she's going to have to move her move action first. Darn it. Uh, 10, 20, 30. She's going to move there. And then she's going to pop this thing off. So right there. Uh, 
as she is surrounded by spirits of adventurers swirling around her, cackling at you at your impending death. What's Chrysanthemum up to? Um, quick question. Is Audrey undead? That's a great question. It's a great question. This is a great question. Do you want to spend the turn trying to figure it out? Um, or do you just want to roll the dice? Based on context clues, she's very white, has a lot of blood missing, did say if I can't escape the, you know, this place without a live, then neither can you. I would say yes. Right, but I just want to f- try and figure out if she is, because so, there's something I can do if she's undead. I'd say, I'd say go for it, and if you're wrong, you look a little stupid. Okay. Uh, undead or goth phase, and I, I'd put money on undead. I a tough just, call. Uh, yeah, no. okay. Worst case um, scenarios, you're probably going to affect the hands and such. <laughs> um, in that case, I am going to um, pull out my holy symbol and use my channel divinity and attempt to turn undead. That's solid. Um, you call out and donation door looking real good right now. Yeah, that gray area, gray area. All right, let's see how they do. She's going to make her save. And then these guys get their saves. One, two, three. Bink, 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 bunk. Uh, let's see. Bink. And bink. All right, well, that kind of did what you wanted. Um, Swarm 1 is now turned and attempting to pull back. And Swarm 2 is also turned and attempting to pull back. All right. That was solid. (laughs) Excellent work. It raises the question exactly what Shakira is going to do to match that coolness. (laughs) How do I follow that? Um, I, <laughs> uh, I, again, I'm not sure, but um, I thought about casting a spell, but I don't know if it's going to affect our dearest undead Audrey. But I thought about casting a witch bolt. Witch bolt at the witch? But which mm-hmm. bolt are you going to cast at the witch? Ah, ah, the witch ah, bolt, ah. I think, is which, which one I will... I cast. <laughs> I was trying to be snarky there, but I, I can't. No, no. Words, words are hard. <laughs> which bolt is which bolt I'm going to bolt at that witch? Thank you. <laughs> Snarkira. Snarkira. <laughs> um, you need to roll me an attack roll. So I actually just click the little plus four next to witch bolt, and we'll see if you can connect with it. Okay. Um, by the way, it is actually true that when my teenager was in fifth grade, we did Who's On First for his talent show. Except it was Who's Playing Reinhardt. Solid. Who's Playing Reinhardt, What's Playing Diva, and I Don't Know Plays Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. It was That's awesome. really fun. Um, we actually had one dad come up to us afterwards and go, the kids need to see the classics. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's the nice bringing thing about bringing you know, them up right. You got it. That's, um, that's the nice is, thing is you get to share all that cool stuff and look super like clever. And they never have to know that you, it's like, you know, something you borrowed. Ten's not going to hit. Do you want to stick with that, or do you want to use one of your bank to rerolls? Or is Chat going to force you to reroll because Chat has its tools? Um, if not that, I would say that's probably a good one. Uh, as a uh, level one spell. That's a good one. That's a good one to make sure. Yeah, because then it keeps connecting. So exactly. once you hit, then it keeps going. So to Emperor Palpatine, her. Mm. Uh-huh. And Julie. What do you think, Arya? I think I would like to do it. Okay. We, we'll go to the Book of Better. Fate. Just press the button again. Okay. Go ahead and roll it. We'll see if we do any better. That will hey. connect. 
You can roll your d12 damage. Two. Two points of damage. Ah, 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 ah. But it's lightning <laughs> damage. That's a premium damage type. I mean, I can't do lightning damage. So what, what does that look like when you cast that? What's Jarkira's version of it? I am absolutely Emperor Palpatining it. That's the only way. There is no other way. <laughs> let's see if I remember. Let's see. So you're going to have to step. Yeah, you're standing like right next to Chrysanthemum. You're like, oh, yeah, watch this. <laughs> um, just really quick. Can you click on wisdom really fast? Your wisdom button. Just, just quick At the check. top? Yep. Just, just for my peace of mind. There we go. Take we'll take the save. Okay. Yeah, first you shout for Clarton to duck. <laughs> then you launch. Fire the hole! <laughs> Four. Yeah, four. <laughs> Clarton drops to a knee as lightning shoots out over his head. Um, and uh, oh, 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 hmm. oh. oh no. The emotions in those O's keep changing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's just I a, was a roller coaster. That's a DM thinking of things. <laughs> going, this will be cool. <laughs> then uh, no that's as, bad for as, as, one, as one goes <laughs> by the way kids um you're not necessarily seeing D, &D you're seeing a game that is inspired heavily by dungeons and dragons we take liberties <laughs> with the rules whenever it's cool yep. which by the way it is yeah. rule of cool as it's known is uh the most important thing in tabletop rpg as far as i'm concerned mm -hmm. um speaking of cool uh this swarm of limbs is going to literally swarm up and over Clarton and and begin to claw and pummel at him. Um, the mass... Mm. Doesn't do much. As he swings his bow back and forth, Hawkeye style, you know, one limb comes up, bats it away, a couple more limbs climb up over each other, he kicks those off. Um, however, whole, oh, um, they start to grab you, like, hands grab onto your ankles and additional ones start to latch onto your knees and they start pulling you to the ground. Um, a result of this conflict is going to cause 10 points of damage. Oh, okay. And then I need you to give me a strength save. All right. Uh Strength save. Woo! Which you made. Now nice. 20. You pull yourself up a little bit. Um, you're like, oh, okay, that sucked. Not today, hands. <laughs> but 10 points of damage, that's owie. Okay. Try a disarming strike as a reaction. Don't think you can... Oh, God. Proxima, I'm going to time you out now. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you go sit in the corner. Oh, and you on. think about what you've done. Think about what you've done. They're allowed to make or you're allowed to make puns and they're not. I mean you are the host of the show. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it took you a second. It did. It did. I don't think oh. <laughs> Did it. I think that's why I'm so angry. It took me too long. It took me a while too, but I wasn't obvious about it. I was too concerned with losing half my hit points at a single strike, and now I've seen it. So yes, it's it's funny. Um, Valentina's gonna step up and she's gonna throw. You know what? She's had it. She never got along got along well with Audrey, and she's going to go straight at her. 
Uh, she was here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, uh, she goes charging with both daggers out. She's, as she goes, she you watch as she spins them in her hands and then spins them around so they're facing down as she comes charging up on her. And then she hits that barrier of spirits. And um, do, 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 do. how much is that that she just took? Oh, she took that much. Um, she screams and slides to her onto her knees and sort of skids the last bit of distance towards her as various like spirits of adventurers swarm past her and you watch as her life force is being pulled out by them. Oh the mission <laughs> as Clark Rogue. as he's fighting to his <laughs> Rogue stay in the back what are you doing? Did they not teach you this in Rogue School? <laughs> Where did you go to school? Where did you where did you learn wealth wealth acquisition? I bet you it wasn't a dwarven college. They'd have told you to stay in the back. They were gnome schooled. Gnome schooled. Ah, that explains it. Wow. Oh. I love it. Volo's gonna like whip out a small hand crossbow and take like a shot down the hallway. Um Mostly ineffect effectively, but at least he's trying. So there's that. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, Ezekiel's <laughs> just going to hold his own in the back next to the guy paying his checks. The monk is going to step up, but she's not really sure what to do given what just happened to Valentina. So she's hanging out behind you guys. Probably a good call. I like to think so. Which takes us back to Clarton. All right. Uh, I got a swarm of paws on me, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, drop the bow. Two hand axes. And start trying to scrape them off me. All right, hit me your attack roll. Okay. Thanks. Oof. Eleven. Uh, yeah, that'll hit. Nice. Okay. And yeah, they're not hard to hit. For uh, five damage. Five damage. That'll that'll chop up a couple of them. All right, and then a bonus action. Same verse or Off second verse. Axe. Same as first. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Nine. Oh, fudge! Ooh. Does that hit him? That's not. Okay, and just miss. Just. Did some, did some chopping. Did some chopping. All right, that's fair. It's, it put some damage on the field. Um, let's see. That's going to take us to Drumir. Right. So uh, Drumir is going to draw his bow and lean around the corner um, and take, an, take aim. Uh, if she did not perceive me with my 20, then I might get advantage on that. Fifth edition's super weird about this sort of stuff, so I'll leave that to DM discretion, but yeah. Okay. I would like to attempt to have shot her after having been hidden. Yep. Said that. Uh, I also think she's next to an ally, so I'd get some attack again. But she's not next to an ally that's currently threatening her. Good point. She's next to an ally that's trying to pull her brain back into her head. That's a good point. Um, so. Did did I successfully hide from her around the corner? But you did. Excellent. Roll that. Double thirteens. What good luck. <laughs> Roll all the damage. I would love to. He said with no small amount of hatred for rogues. Yeah, I mean, it's the one thing we got. It is. It's not like we're monks. That'd be that'd be crazy. Um, definitely or, hits her good. Or moon druids. I actually don't know. Do moon druids do a bunch? They just uh, second level moon druid can be a bear with like forty seven hit points. So oh. yeah, it's yeah it, yeah it's brutal. Don't we have brutal. a moon druid like for one of our off nights? Uh, well, if you do, the, I, if they don't know that, don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> 
We were never here. <laughs> um, okay, so Swarm 1 is going to turn, for the most part, and swarm away. Uh, fearful of Chrysanthemum's wrath. Uh, so that's all they got going. Swarm 3, on the other hand, is quite content to continue pummeling Clarton. And let's see how they do. Uh, let's see. There's the mass attack. And then the grapple attack. Well, that's not so bad. Okay. <laughs> that's not so bad. That's only going to be four points. Okay. As they continue to, like, clamor and claw and pull... Um, trying to get like a couple of times, like one like latches onto your arm where your axe is, and the other one latches onto its wrist, and they like together start to pull you pull that hand down. Got it. Awesome. All right. Um, Audrey, for her part, is going to. Oh yeah, she has that spell to cast. That could be fun. Oh wait, she's already concentrating though. She can't. Darn. Yeah, so we did do some damage to her. Yeah. Wiggles well, eyebrows. And more to the point, she can't just, you know, cast another concentration-based spell. Yeah. Oh. No, I was hoping our damage had perhaps broken her concentration. Not yet. It nice. might. It might eventually, yet. but not it yet. Might eventually. She is, however, going to take a few steps past Valentina because who cares? And that's going to move the zone to be there. Ah. So we'll erase that. And we'll erase that. And we'll put the zone back where it is. One, two, three. Boom. So there's her zone of of angry spirits. The angry zone. As the we angry like to call zone. It. The anger zone. Um, and then I guess we're just going to be really simple about this. And... Uh, I need a sacred is that so I need a deck save from Sharkira. No, wait, no, I need an arc. Nope, don't don't click it. Don't click it. Don't click it. I forgot what I was gonna do. Give me an arcana check. As as she strides towards you, you watch as with one of her hands, she grabs on to the lightning you are channeling into her, pulls it off of her body, and clenches it in her fists. Oh. What? So roll that arcana check. Yep. She got a 13. She did? I show it in the game log. Yeah, that's where I'm seeing it. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. You stay connected to her, and you have control of the witch bolt. Mm. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. That, okay, she might not have mm. control of the witch bolt at some point. <laughs> That's fun. Great. <laughs> oh, looks like you just got raided. That happens. That happens. That happens. Um, that's not the button I wanted to push. That's still not the button I wanted to push. In there somewhere. Hey. While I'm in there, I'll push that button. Oh, nice shield. Thank you. And then I'm going to push that button. And then I'm going to say it's um, Chrysanthemum, you're up. What are you doing? We're going to finish out this round of combat, and then we're going to recap how the round of combat went. And we're going to welcome those raiders properly. For now, pull up a chair. Give us, give us three minutes, and we'll <clears throat> recap where our action is. Okay. Um, I'm going to have a whiskey. <laughs> that's Bad a mood. Ball. The swarm mm -hmm. that's on Clarton, um, mm -hmm. I'm not super familiar with how swarms work. Can I cast Toll the Dead like at the swarm, or does it have to target a specific You can. Target a specific individual? Um, I'm curious if you plan to stand your ground where you are as my first question. Probably not. Um, okay. But I would want to back away, but stay within range of Toll the Dead to see if I can help, okay. help Clarton out. Okay, so you back up out of that? Yeah, I'm going to back up out and then okay. cast Toll the Dead. Cool. And so that means the Swarm makes a Wisdom save? Mm, if he remembers so. right? 
Because I don't, yes. or to, yeah, total dead is not an attack, doesn't do an attack. That's a uh, wisdom or something. Yeah, it's a wisdom save. Okay, target is for you 12. All right, let's see how they do. They're not, they're not smart. Zombie limbs are not known for being bright creatures. Yep, roll your damage. Out of bringing yeah. among them. Okay. Uh... As you as you call upon them to return to death. Oh, damn it. That is pretty good. That's kind of cool. Um, Sharkira, you have the option to take your action to continue to pump damage into Audrey if you want to. As you currently have control of the uh, the lightning. Now. Yeah, I, I think that's my only option at this point. I'm not sure what else I would do. Here's the good news. You don't have to roll attack. All you got to do is roll damage. <gasps> nice. Okay. That is the magic of the Witch Bolt. It's already connected. Now you just surge energy through it. Witch yep. Bolt is pretty awesome as long as you don't lose control of it, right. I guess. That's why I was... That, that's <laughs> concerning me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not bad. That's not bad. And then the other swarm of zombies, limbs, uh, that's number two. They're just going to continue to hold their distance because they're terrified of chrysanthemum. It's uh, quite spooky. is going to take up wrath. a defensive position uh, because she wants to be sure that chrysanthemum is covered. Um, chrysanthemum appreciates it. Yeah. Ezekiel's going to step around Volo and provide him some cover. Because nobody gets paid if he gets killed. <laughs> and it's not technically his mission to get Valentina out alive. That's fair. Yes. Valentina, Very... Valentina starts to pick herself up and then screams again as more of those swarming things suck the life energy out of her. Um, Ramir says, oh, hell. In fact, she drops down where she's got, she drops one of the da her daggers as she puts her hand against the ground. And she's now on both knees and one hand down and she's barely like holding her other hand up. It looks like the only thing keeping her conscience is like pure spite that Audrey is doing this. <laughs> <laughs> like just there's that anger and fury that a former party member has become undead and had the audacity to act on her new evil ways. Which brings us to the end of the round of combat, and I can now officially take a moment to thank Pond for bringing her group over here. Thank you for coming by tonight. I'm sorry your game didn't happen, um, but thank you for sharing everybody with us um, and for playing Wildermyth, which we are not going to talk about, because if we do, Greybeard there will not stop. <laughs> Once we open up that can of worms, I get to go away for like 20 minutes. <laughs> um, we can all go have a beer and uh, maybe get pizza delivered in the downtime. It's kind of like when the Decker decided to go do a, something in Shadowrun First Edition. Order pizza, turn on the Xbox, you got some time. But thank you for all, everybody come over. My name is Rob, aka Lantern Noir. Um, we play a D and d here. We do coffee streams in the morning sometimes. We play a variety of games. And Sundays and Wednesdays are my D&D nights. We're playing Waterdeep. The group is attempting desperately to get the rogue Valentina out of this piece of the Undermountain alive in order to prove that she wasn't previously killed in a fire. A ghost. So yeah, so the ghost will stop haunting the tavern <laughs> that Volo paid them with. Yeah, he paid us in a haunted cav a tavern. Your friend is, is not dead. Please leave our house. Pretty much going to be a money pit unless we can be yeah. ghosted. Yeah. The possessed property of a possessed property. Uh. It'll be a very nice park. <laughs> Combination nice. cemetery and green space. Great. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, major metropolitan areas really don't value these spaces as well as they could. Then would it be a haunted green space? Who knows? We <laughs> might just clear it out. Could, could it be the taxpayers paying for it, not us? But exactly. We wouldn't have a tavern. Exactly. Okay, so before we start the next round of combat, we have one bit of housekeeping we got to clear up. Um, did Shakira back up? Or is she standing in that swirling mass of undead, angry adventurer spirits? Um, she's probably going to regret this, but she's not backing down. She's still hanging out in there. Okay. Magically challenged. I do need you to roll me a wisdom save. He said desperately trying. I think, I'm pretty sure it's a wisdom save. If not, it is now. Because that's what I told you to do. 
No take backs. No take backs. <clears throat> yep, it is wisdom. A 14. Actually, I think that's good enough. Hey. Cool. So you only take three damage. As the various spirits swarm around you, and you can you can hear, like, how they died, as they call into you, the the traps that took them, the monsters that disemboweled them. The betrayal. <clears throat> there's there's one that you're pretty sure you heard how she died, and I can't, as the dungeon master, describe it on stream because it would be a TOS violation. Mm. Yikes! Pretty <clears throat> brutal. So I'll let your imagination fill that one in. The noodle incident, <laughs> I say. <laughs> and you will enjoy it. It's very much like a long-term D&D campaign, for the record. So what is Clarkton doing? All right. Oh, wait. You're uh, starting off your turn in the, in the, in the combat zone. Yeah, do it. Okay, so is it an end of turn or is it a beginning of turn? I'm doing it at the both? end of your turn. Perfect. Okay. So Whew. what's your plan? Uh, I would die. Um, <laughs> yeah, he uh, he he's like must finish the mission. So bonus action, I will take my uh, second wind. Ah. Um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm dying here. They did recruit um, you to be the beefy one. Uh, yeah, which again, no beef, all decks. Um, <laughs> we heard fighter, and we're like, yeah, get in, <laughs> get in here. Yeah, you got it. Um, <laughs> is there a button for? Probably. Uh, so practice? there's a click for it to to uh, to say yes. I I'm taking it now, but then I don't see a button. It's more for lover. Um. I guess I... Bonus action. Uh, no, because you'll have to do it by hand, it looks like. All right, so... Just yeah, you is... click on your little pile of dice and then grab a D10 and throw it at the table. Perfect. Plus two. D10 plus two. Come on now. Big money, no whammy. Wait, why am I on your side? Seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Okay, uh, I can move You're that. always on our side. Am I? I mean, you're there to create a dramatic encounter for all of us. True. All right, I mean, so all dead, you're out of staff, a job. But, you know, not always. <laughs> if we're all dead, you're out of a job. Okay, so <laughs> now, you know, feeling, you know, must finish the mission. I am going to move 5, 10, 15. If, the, if I can move out of the swarm. Okay, backwards or forward? Uh, I'm going to head towards Valentina. 5, 10, 15, interact, grab her. And move my other 15 to get us just outside of that zone. Okay. All about the mission. All about oh, the mission. I was going to do that, but I'm happy that your initiative is first. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. So we should be just on the outside of that, I hope. Yep. Okay. Perfect. I'm totally down with that. You guys end up over there. Um, however, you are leaving engagement. Mm. You know what that means. Mm -hmm. uh, Bonus action for five. Five points? Five points. All right. As, as the, the clawing hands are not content to watch you escape, <sighs> and they continue to claw. And there's like, you start to get yourself up. And part of that is like, they get their hand, literally hands around your ankles. And you like face plant at first. <laughs> and you kind of pick yourself up and continue to pull and <sighs> kick and... Okay. They're quite a little little uh, challenge here. I like yeah. them. You're going to see more of those. No, <laughs> Nobody tell the Convergence team what happened tonight. I want to throw these at them, too. <laughs> yes, mm, indeed, Polly, you have to hand it to them. Mm. Ah. <laughs> so what, what's Dramir doing? Uh, so Dramir, uh, <laughs> like, looking around the corner, he goes, all right, fine. He starts to, like, takes a step forward and then... Uh, uh, He's uh, Clareton, like, ah, you know, <laughs> rush forward. New, like, All right, that, that'll that work, too. Um, taking a look at uh, uh, Audrey and taking a look at uh, Volo, I take a look at Ezekiel and say, 
you know, she's headed right for him, and you'd probably protect him best if she didn't get to him. That big old aura of spooky stuff is not going to go well with his complexion. Might I recommend a more aggressive approach? I will sling an arrow uh, at Aubrey. <laughs> Well, chiding the fighter is a free action. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. I critically <clears throat> missed. I... <laughs> I, was doing, I was doing a little bit of talking more so than uh, aiming this time well, around. Well, you know, that's... Do you, want to, do you want to pop one? You've got five right now available to you. It's, it's just, yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, and then I'm going to take several steps backwards. Let's okay. say about mm -hmm. 25 feet worth. <laughs> that's my move speed. Okay. All right. So Jameer backpedals even further away from the corner. And that then takes us to limb one, which are turned. They're not doing anything interesting. Limbs three. Uh, nearest warm body. Oh, that's Sharkira. Brave, brave Sharkira. Who's still in a battle of wills with her witch bolt into um, Audrey. As they start to, like, grab onto, like, Shakira's boots and start to pull her down and start to kind of roll up over her. Um, making it somewhat hard to keep the spell active, but, eh. Um, let's see. They get their first basic attack against her. <laughs> And then their second attack. Um, okay. Pink. Okay, so here's the good news. You're not dead. Bad news is you're at one hit point. Oh. Yikes. I know what I'm doing my next turn. So those are definite, like, like now you're starting to bleed. Um, I also need you to roll me a concentration check. Yup. That would be a there constitution save. Constitution save. Which you're not bad at. Most wizards are real shit at it. You're not bad at it. Yeah, but most wizards don't roll an eight. I mean, the dice do what the dice will do. I'm just saying you were, you know, you had a better chance than most. Now, as a reminder, you have the pool. Okay. Otherwise, you've lost your, your channel of energy into evil crazy lady. Use one. Use one. Oh, I oh, oh. I, oh. Poly, polymorph pop, pop the once per hour on your behalf. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Chat to the rescue. The next one of those has to be uh, has to be channel points, or we'll have to go to the bank, which we've got a few. By so reroll that Constitution save. I got I got to compliment Polymorph not only for uh, his fantastic uh, assistance, but as a fellow Paul, I got to say I'm very upset that I didn't come up with the term Polymorph. That's a very clever handle. Oh wow! It went down. Oh no! <laughs> oh, yeah. I rescind my uh, 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 a compliment. <laughs> the, the dice giveth, and the dice taketh away. Take away. Wasn't meant to be. Yep. Oh. Womp womp. Uh, F in chat. There's also, if you're a subscriber here, you have a critical miss emote you can throw in chat too to show solidarity for when this kind of thing happens. And the fail. Whose is that? I will have to check that out. That's kind of cool. Um. So you've lost control of the spell, which, which is not all bad. It just sort of like pitters out. Um, now comes the bad part. She's up. Mm. She's up and she's decided that her real anger is not with you. That's she, a good thing. Yeah. She locks yeah, eyes with Chrysanthemum. Oh. Uh oh. Uh, and she's going to bring down a heck of a hurt. Ooh. Uh, pink. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. You can totally take nine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm you can okay. take I'm, nine. I'm, I'm okay. You can I'm take okay. nine. Um, as she points at Chrysanthemum and just makes a downward clenchy motion with her fist, 
and you watch as just a spiritual column of stone drops on her. Oh, no. And there's a moment where she even, like, looks up and has that knee-jerk reaction of, like, I'm about to get crushed as it slams into her, giving you a moment's taste of what it was like to be crushed in a death trap. I mean, I just got to say, I, I feel like she has it out against the wrong individuals I here. We weren't even, I didn't that. even know you. I've never met you before. <laughs> She doesn't even go here. I feel your pain. <laughs> I also have been, I'm not even supposed to be here today. How rude. <sighs> we'll, we'll channel the uh, little um, Will Smith there in chat. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll see what Chrysanthemum does in response. Okay. Um, so was that just a damage or was that like a field of some kind? That was just, she just, that was guiding bolt, but that's the form it took. Okay. Well, where, where's, okay. Um, as much as I'd, Chrysanthemum's just fuming and I'd really like to take a shot at her, but I'm going to move up behind uh, Sharkira and I, just gl I'm just glaring like glaring daggers at Audrey um, but I'm gonna um, like solidarity slap um, Sharkira on the back and I'm gonna cast a cure wounds okay for <laughs> for three I'm so mad I'm just like uh, not really concentrating, but and hey, I'm gonna blow a raspberry. Her hit points. <laughs> Take what I can get. Yeah, I, I've been there. One way to look at it. One. Of, um. By the way, could you oh, um, give me a wisdom save? A wisdom save. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm not too bad at those. Uh, no. No, I'm more looking for like a really bad like crit level. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You you get your hand in there, and you start to feel as you reach into that zone of angry spirits. You can feel their pain. It's almost like like knives under your fingernails level, and you're able to still connect and channel your divinity that way. And then you pull your hand back really fast. I'm just gonna like glare daggers at Audrey the whole time, like keeping eye contact blow a raspberry and then can I use my movement to duck like around the corner of the wall <laughs> yeah like and then, uh, absolutely you can hide okay <laughs> okay Shakira has all of these like claws and hands pulling her down she's got Audrey right in front of her she's surrounded with spirits of dead adventurers this is it what is she doing Boy. Um well she's not feeling too hot. She's kinda doing the 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 wave a little bit. She feels a little bit better after Chris's help. So thank you for that. Um, let's see. I Question. think yes. we, we we did have a couple potions of healing. Did we ever remark as to who got those? She might have one if she wants to use an action to drink it. I don't know that we ever actually specified who had them. Uh, I think it would be very Clark reasonable for Clarton would probably have one and Shakira probably has another because the goal was not to load him up on the cleric in case the cleric goes down right yeah that sounds familiar mm -hmm. that sounds very reasonable to me I would also want there are some pretty handy spells in there she might consider taking out under the circumstances the DM's not going to tell you what to do he's just going to say I'd be looking at my spell list right now, because if you're going to go down, you're, you should go down to Blaze of Glory. I mean, such is Shakira's Sh way. Um, but you said if I took a health potion, I would have that would That's be you. my action for the turn. Yep. Um, you you've got maybe a tenth of a second. Do you hit the heal button, or do you go for that left trigger right trigger combo attack? I don't know. I don't know. Make a compelling argument. <laughs> 
Screw it, we're going all in. All right. Yeah, let's go. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. All right, let's see. What in this case, zombie to? hands. Zombie hands, yes. Well, and the undead. Well, yeah, that too. Doom cleric and all of the negative energy within the undermount she summoned to her bidding. I mean, that part too. Yeah. But who's who's counting? I mean, I can barely keep track of it myself. <laughs> I'm not. I know you can't tell me. Uh, <laughs> so. But I'm not sure what. To so use. you have one slot left, right? One first level slot. You know which witch fold does. You know that disguise self would be maybe not super useful in a combat type situation. I was looking at the wrong screen. Okay, so maybe maybe burning hands. I mean, that is a lot of damage, and uh, there are two enemies in front of you. I think that would be a solid move. That's fair. All right. I'm going to light my hands on fire in a way, and I think I'm going to cast burning hands. Okay. Um, roll your damage for that. So click the damage button. Um, and holy flahitas. Hey. Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> now I'm hungry. Uh, a little Audrey up burning hands action. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Man, this this chat, I tell you what, man, they are right on top of it. Chat's on fire tonight. Oh Digging wow! It, loving it, loving um, it. Yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. That's um, that's a keeper. That's a solid one. Had that in my pocket. Okay, fair enough. Fair, fair enough. Um, She's on fire too. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so so that happened. Um, she actually made her save, so she only takes half damage. Still. So she's still dead. Half of a lot is... Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> half of a lot is enough. <laughs> um, the swarm directly in front of you did not make it save. It takes full damage. All access. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you... Glad to see you in here. Glad to have you hanging out. Um, it's It's been a night. It's been a night. The MVP of the night is definitely chat um so let me um <laughs> a lot is enough oh that would make a great shirt um yep half of a lot is enough <laughs> so many applications <laughs> all right so we'll get rid of all that um bing and you're left in an empty hallway as the spirits kind of explode past you into the halls and the piles of limbs just sort of thump and 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 go still at the end of the hallway in this large pile. Jumir will round the corner and uh, see what is in front of him. You all right? Both alive? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. All Val right. Valentina's not looking great, just as a point of clarity. I mean, he did say he did say we're fine, which to me says not dead, which mm -hmm. is way better than the alternative. Not alive. <laughs> Could be dead. A little bit alive. Um, so, well. And all access. Thank you thing. for uh, subscribing during this moment. We'll I'll thank you more in a second. I turned to Volo. It's like, I mean, she definitely was dead when you left her, right? I kind of looked to the other members of their party, <laughs> right? They, they they nod. I mean, okay. Just, well, I I can't imagine how anyone survived that. I guess she kind of didn't, but okay. All right. Puts his hands and his head in his hands. All right, let's let's just call the let's just call the lift down. <laughs> Whew. Whew. You make your way down the hallway and signal through the various rope pulleys that the lift should come claim you. Um, 
and a few moments later, the platform comes down. Each of you steps in, hooks onto one of the various bits of the chain, and get your gold piece ready. And as you all start to fish, goes, no, 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 I, I absolutely insist. I am paying for all of us to come up. Happy to let you do so. No, it's the least I could do. It is, it is the, the least, least you could you do, could but do. thanks. <laughs> Just the, the least I could do as you work your way back up again. Um, and you start to, the, the platform comes up and out. Um, and you're able to uh, to pay. And you come on in. The other group kind of, you know, they, they check on Valentina. She's looking not great. But she's able to walk. Um, they get themselves something to drink to kind of nurse their wounds. Uh, and then she kind of looks at you and says, well, now what? Point of order. Uh, how much uh, how much favor of the uh, god of, goddess of luck do you still have? Uh, mm. Chrysanthemum. I'll be okay. Oh, no, I was asking Chrysantha if she had more spells. Uh, <laughs> I have two spell slots left. Might I suggest a heal to our, I our can... dear friend who is definitely going to help us? I can do a heal. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna walk up, and I'm going to, like, I forget. What, what race is Valentina? What is she? She's human. Okay, I'm going to walk up and, like, Put, try and like put my hands on the sides of her arms and just make eye contact and be like, you did great back there. Hmm. And I will cast Cure Wounds for... That's a little better. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's gorgeous. Oh, that's a lot better. <laughs> a yeah, that's, better that's bringing her back from wherever she was. And I'll give her like a, you know, like a little squeeze. You did great. Second point of order. Uh... I think Volo mentioned drinks. <laughs> As you say that, a barmaid comes <laughs> over and puts down a tray. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Arkira says, oh, thank God. I'm going to plop myself, like, hike <sighs> myself up onto a chair and just, like, <sighs> legs swinging in the air. And... Excuse me. Throw one back. Third point of order. Uh, it'd be really fantastic if you could accompany us back to the Shattered <laughs> Troll, whatever it was. Troll, sc Troll Skull Manor. Uh, for a quick chat with uh, your dear friend. She nods. I, I can do that. Fantastic. <laughs> Actually, could I have one to go? Um, yeah, they can hook you up with that. I downed yeah. one pretty quickly, so I might have to hold Sharkira's hand. <laughs> You're also grabbing one for the road? No, I'm not grabbing one. It was just one, but it, it was like I drank it. I threw it back kind of fast because we need to go. So I'm just, I'm just a little bit like. Well, Sharkira gonna, will, will help your hand support Chris part of the way. <laughs> But a little geez. wobbles. Usually, usually I pace myself, but we're kind of in a, I pace myself more, but we're kind of in a hurry. Yep. <laughs> it, it's been it's been an afternoon for sure. In one an hand afternoon. I shall support you, the other hand I'm supporting my to-go drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh Clarton will say, uh should I pop this? And he holds up the, the potion. I'm busted up. He's bloodied. He's at like half oh, hit yeah. points. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we could, we could. We're not in a super rush. We could take a short rest, I assume. I mean, it's pretty late. Like, we're talking four or five in the morning here. Oh yeah. Mm, well, okay. uh, technically, we have until the sunrise, so maybe well, not. I mean, yeah, we could get it done and then just sleep the whole day. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you, you said you perhaps have an additional heal. I don't mean to, you know. Me? A, oh. I know it's a religious thing, but like. Yeah, I could do, I could do one more. Sorry. 
Let's just hope we don't try get then, we don't get mugged on the way there. Yeah, and that's he'll he'll cork it and put the potion back for safekeeping for. All right, I'll cast one more. Ah, eh, that's not great. <laughs> yeah, four it's, is four. Better than nothing. hit points. Yep. Four is four. No longer okay. bloody. No longer exactly. It's important to think positively in D and D. Yeah, and as long as Shakira doesn't trip on her own feet and face plant, you guys are gonna make and it there fall in one on piece. me. We're good. Because- well, and that's why I wanted to keep the the potion if possible, because then <laughs> you know the healer goes down. Yeah, um, I am spelled out and at about half my hit points. So if we get in trouble, I'm I'm taking a back seat. I'm sure it'll be fine. Y'all have to handle it. <laughs> I'm I, yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. I mean, what's what's the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> Those daggers are now stared at you. you know, like, <laughs> and that's, that will be Clarton's thing is he'll kind of be like bow in hand, you know, look in the dark corners, checking the six, you know, bodyguard style. Yeah. But uh, I think returning to uh, Full Skull Manor would be well within the, the correct idea here. Okay. You start to make your way through the various roads to your establishment. Um, and as you arrive, um, you notice two figures standing on the stoop of the manor house. How how official do they look? Oh, very official. In fact, you you recognize one immediately as as one Silas Quillman. <laughs> oh, hello. Representative of of the Waterdeep Department of Deeds and Titles. That's right. And what uh, at? yeah, the what at? The what at? That's right. The what at? And he's he's standing there and he's he's checking through some various notes he's collected and then he he's glancing over at the 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 skyline which is starting to turn from that dark dark blue into a a slightly pinker tone of a light purple as the sun's preparing to crest so exactly how many minutes do we have left until like government accepted sunrise well when he sees the sun the sun's risen (laughs) all right (laughs) i'm gonna like stand aside stand aside (sighs) yep (laughs) As we as we rush our our acquire robe uh, to the to the doorstep, she kind of you know hustles along with you and looks around a bit. Um, says, "Oh, good morning. It's glad to see that you're here. I have the forms ready." And it, oh, who's this? No time. Hold on. <laughs> Just like we got ten minutes. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna like shut Close. the door behind us as we go. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Close and latch it. Like the, the walls like half burn through and you can see, but we took the time to latch it. I lock. <laughs> right, so uh she'd be here any moment. Um I think she's just really upset that she thought you died, so we'll see what happens. Valentine kinda of looks around and very very carefully slides a dagger out to look around um and there's a moment where you start to see flames starting to to rot you know cackle along the edges of the walls and you start to like smell that burning wood and fabric but you don't see any smoke then you can kind of start to feel the warmth and you, as you look up, you can see a figure coming down that central spiral staircase in the middle of the, the manor. Flames are just dancing off of her dress, what's left of it. And she just, lo- I mean, she looks at Valentina. And there's a moment where Valentina stands there, and then both of her daggers drop to the ground. And she runs at the stairs. And the two figures embrace them, embrace each other. And you can see where she, the, the madam just completely wraps herself around the smaller woman. And as she does, the flames 
all around you along the walls burst to completely engulf everything. For a moment, you feel nothing but that roaring heat of the inferno. And then as you watch, the flames rise, revealing meticulously maintained mahogany walls. The places that were papered, the paper is, is as though freshly placed upon it. The windows, clear as day. You look over at the bar, everything is lined up neatly as it should be. I'm like wiping tears from my eyes. <laughs> as she Use lets spear to dab them. As the spirit <laughs> lets go of Valentina, Valentina you know, starts to say something, and the woman just puts a, a finger down to her lips. No. You did what was right. There shall be no apologies. And as she backs away, she you can see she's still mostly an entity of flame. Her long hair dances out and kind of cackles at the corners. And she takes a moment to smooth her, her dress, puffs her collar slightly, and then descends the stairs to you. Which of you claimed ownership of my home? I'm going to point to... Um... Ari and, or sorry, Shakira and um, Drummer and say, the three of us equally. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I trust that you'll make sure my girls are well taken care of when they're not working. I'll be upstairs if you need anything. You may wish to post advertisements for interviews if Eddie would like to join the company. Uh, very well. And she turns to the, to, to the stairs. I uh, I take a glance at the other two and go like I I really don't think it's a good idea to argue with her about this. No. So uh, let her have her moment. She she pauses. Wow. Pauses the stairs. Oh no, this is not a moment. I'm assuming you wish to reopen the brothel on the upper two floors. It is. We not haven't gotten something that far yet. Discussed yet, but it seems something that's important to you. Oh no, um, it is simply my way of thanking you. Right. Um, I look at the door. So there is a government worker who is here to ensure that this place is not haunted. Oh, so tiring. Yes. So I would, it would be real terrible if they were to come in here and find a, uh, oh. a hostile entity um, he says, like, kind of scratching his head. Um, so I would, it would be fantastic if, um, oh, if this that were not was not all this. I mean, you, I don't know exactly how any of it works, but I'm just saying that's about to be what's happening. And you seem very, very well. content where she <clears throat> waves a hand upwards and you watch as it sort of goes from that light pink flame to flesh. And spreads across her for a bit. Send in the gentleman. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. I appoint to whoever's closest to the door. <laughs> I will go to, I will go and unlatch the door and open it. <laughs> Silas comes in. Oh, good. So, um, the spirit, have you remedied it? There is no spirit here. Or actually, I should say something probably more. There is like, no hostile spirit here. Yeah, I should probably say something like, "There are no problems remaining in this building." To which the the woman at the at the stairs, oh, there are plenty of spirits behind the bar. Why don't you go ahead and have one on a, on the house to start your morning off right? I take a look of like. That's really good. <laughs> yep, I mean you know. I'm going to trot over to the bar and just like pull something out. He looks just, well, I was, I was quite, oh dear. He starts flipping around. Okay. Well then it would seem that, um, we can certify this establishment as free of spirits and we can, we can transfer the deed to you. 
Um, I guess, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, per that section, uh, previously mentioned, section six, paragraph three, uh, you appear to be in full compliance. Um, I will need you to sign here and here on this form to verify that we've had this conversation. I make a big show of rolling my eyes before I sign. Vumir is going to do no such thing and just happily sign as much as he needs me to. Oh. And he takes his paperwork and he leaves you a large sheet of parchment with in which he, you know, goes through his bag. He pulls out a seal about yay big and stamps the bottom corner of it. And the four names are listed as the proprietors of Troll Skull Manor, a multi use commercial property. Yay. There we go. Thank you so much for being so diligent in your time. Yes. Hmm. Now I have to go tell the uh, Masons Guild that they won't be putting up any wall for a green space. Hmm. I'm sure there are other locations that would be suitable. Uh, you'd think there'd be more places that were haunted in Waterdeep, but there really aren't. This is the most excitement I've had in weeks. Happy to help. He gets to the door. Are you are you quite certain it's not haunted? Quite certain. We've taken care of the problem quite thoroughly. Valentina, Valentina, it's totally taken care of. And you look, and there's a bottle of something brown <laughs> that's like three quarters empty. <laughs> um, and he leaves. Sophia comes back down the stairs a bit. And leans Close up against the, door, the bar. Latch it. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> <sighs> I we did it. I shouldn't have been so presumptuous. Do you intend to keep me here? I mean, it would. It is. I. Uh, yes. It's your house. You're welcome to stay if you want. That would be awfully rude of us. It is technically your place. Well, perhaps I mean, technically wish... it's ours now, but like it was your. That seems terribly rude of us. Oh, it's I'm yours now. Walk up and I'm gonna walk up and offer my hand. She reaches. She takes it kind of daintily and politely. Xanthemum Coriolis, pleasure to properly make your acquaintance. Oh, Sophia Starcross, Madam and Proprietor of Troll Skull Manor. Well, former proprietor and former owner. I suppose I'm a manager now. I'd We'd be honored to have you. Sure, we can work out the details. Yeah, that um, that sounds great. Excellent. Uh, I mean, I assumed you brainwave. wanted to open the rooms for Let Above with gentlemen and ladies of skill, but you obviously don't have to. What's your vision? Honestly, it's been kind of a whirlwind couple of days. <laughs> um, knowing whether or not we had the place, like, would be able to keep the place in the, in the first place was kind of the point of order. Uh, there was a whole thing with an undermountain. <sighs> I think we'd um, like to sleep on it and think about our options. It sounds like it'd be amazing. Absolutely. A bed and second breakfast. Yeah. And eleven Z's and noon and afternoon <laughs> tea supper. and mid after two dinner and supper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All that stuff. Chrysanthemum is on board with that plan. As long as they have bacon. You guys have a chance to kind of set and kind of like out of character a bit. I mean, yep. what do y'all think? Do you want to? She'll she will stay on if you want to keep her to either manage the bar, manage the the courtesan suites above, or you can convert those into rental rooms. Well, Drumir has uh, no issue with uh, uh, the sex work, um, and she does seem like she like not only does this place already have the the marketing and the branding and the market share, but she clearly will have connections and expertise. So, I mean, that just that just makes financial sense to, to him. Chrysanthemum's envisioning like more of a tavern setting where with like lots of people coming and going and it's just like a fun, safe party atmosphere with maybe like some rooms to rent above. That's that's possible too. She she has connections. We could you could do that. What's your cure is hope? 
I mean, a bed and second <laughs> breakfast does sound nice, but uh, <laughs> uh, I think also kind of pe- uh, picturing that uh, tavern style atmosphere, maybe in in on top party at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> sounds weird but i'm not sure why <laughs> i don't either but i agree <laughs> i'm like i don't know why i'm not comfortable with that word <laughs> but i'm not <laughs> you guys get the gist <laughs> clarton clarton's like uh you know flipping his hand axe just kind of catching it he's like you guys could always just live up there I mean, that I is mean, a thought. That kind of goes without saying. If, if we, you know, I don't. Just... I haven't seen it. How many rooms are actually available? But yeah, the yeah. I, the idea of not paying uh, a rent is fantastic. I really like that idea. <laughs> Regardless of whatever else we do with it, I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So over the next few weeks, you're able to kind of get the word out that you're looking to bring in people to maintain the the atmosphere the there are rooms that can be set for rent um sophia will will kind of transition herself from what she had done before and she immediately takes over um organizing the books interviewing talent for the as bards that come and go Uh, valentina comes on to help manage the bar and the tables um, deciding that she'd rather be here with Sophia than out getting murdered in the Undermountain. Seems very reasonable. So, you know, take that one level of rogue and we're just going to put that in our back pocket for some other time. Always a good fallback plan. Yeah. Actually, two levels of rogue, but who's counting? <laughs> um, and the weeks um, go by as the winter gets into its heaviest. People start to flood into the Troll Skull Manor to enjoy the the literal warmth of the fire and the figurative warmth of the company. And it's a rare night that doesn't have chrysanthemum at some point standing on a table, regaling everyone about that time they were in the Undermountain. Yep. And it's actually during one of those, it's a Saturday afternoon of all times that they've got her well into her pints and people are like picking up the story ahead of her. (laughs) <laughs> because she has told it so many times in the last two weeks that all the, more the regulars there is, the more likely it. there is to be a song and dance involved. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a bar. It's, it's a musical. Like, yeah, you know, burn. A at this point. <laughs> which burn? Um, and they're they're having it all when suddenly the revelry is broken as a massive explosion of flame happens just against the wall of the manor. Oh, no. Oh, no. And we'll talk about where that came from next week. Ah. 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 Wow. Well. In in classic post credits scene style. (laughs) Yeah, we really got a good thing going here, don't we? Yeah, that's right. It sure is great. Boom. (laughs) (laughs) Everything's fine. It's fine. (laughs) Ten more minutes, Mom. Just five more minutes. (laughs) Uh, I would love to, but no. No, we're at the the end of this week's session. This is where we had to get. Um, I will say the one thing about working on all of the different things with uh, the rotating cast, and we really appreciate Graber uh, chipping in tonight to to keep our table full. Um, It's going to be a lot of fun having you come back again because you're on the schedule a couple of times um, as we all kind of come in and out with different weeks. I I think next week, if I'm not mistaken... Let me double check the the, the schedule. I'm um, I may not I will most likely not be here next week. Yes, I planned for that actually. Um, yep. All according to plan. All according to plan. Um, the sixteenth, we are going to be without our wizard and without our priest. So we are with our newfound fighter and a druid. Uh, assuming their their schedule continues to work out. Um, Jeremy is also supposed to be playing with us that night. Um, Three. And if and if he can't, we're going to play some interesting board game, the three of us. Sure. <laughs> nice. um, because Liz also is out next week. Mm. Um, oh. oh, we know Chickadee is supposed to be with us. We should be okay. Wait. 
Did I count too many bodies? Yeah. So we'll see how it turns. <laughs> okay. So we'll see. But we're going to have something next week. But thank you guys for coming out tonight. It was a lot of fun. Um, I, I This was like the most active chat we've had for a D&D game in a really long time. And I got to tell you, it is so much more fun when you guys are part of the conversation with us and girls. Um, just so many neat players hang, uh, hanging out in our chat. I can't shut them all out any reasonable time. If I didn't do a good enough job thanking All Access for subscribing to the channel, I'm going to make a point of really doing that right now. Um, both to say thank you so much, and I promise there will be an animated emote as soon as Twitch gives them to me, and <laughs> Twitch is dragging its feet on mine for some reason, because I know people who just started streaming, like officially pushed live for the first time within the last month, and they have animated emotes. Oh, that's Ooh. weird. Ouch. Yeah. I'm getting a little antsy now. Now I'm like, okay, what, is, what am I not doing? Because, like, you know... We do you want me to ring? Me. Want me to ring the helmet for the new subscriber? Oh, go for it! You don't have an anime. Uh, go for it! Uh, hey. Subscriber sound incoming. Oh. So when uh, oh, wow. I get new subscribers, some of the channels I'm on let me take this mall and hit that guy in the face. Oops! Oops. <laughs> hey, <laughs> love it! Fantastic! Wonderful! There we go. We did that, and so that was that was fun. Um, thank you guys for being here tonight. It's been a lot. Let's go around the table again. Um, I would love to hear. So who are you? Where do we find you? Because everyone should find all of the amazing people who are hanging out here tonight um, at their various things. And um, what's your star of the night? Like, what was the one thing you like? We, this game could have used more of that because that was really cool. <laughs> um, and we will. Oh, oh, oh we have we have a, a guest. You going to bed? Do you want to say hi? Packing my lunch. You're packing your lunch? Okay. Do you want to say anything to anybody? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Hello and goodbye. There she goes. <laughs> I'm out. Hi, bye. There she goes. I'm hoping when I do my pub stream again that I can set a second camera up and get her in her dress and have her do Irish dance to a couple of the tunes. <laughs> oh. Because she does do Irish step dance. So. Oh, no kidding. Uh, That's nice. awesome. <laughs> I, if I do whiskey in the jar, you'll do hard shoe to it. All right, we have an agreement, folks. Come here, come here. Get in here. Get in here. All right. I know, but I want I want this on camera. Well, what did you just say? <laughs> no. I, no. <laughs> no. 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 Oh, you little stinker. Smart kid. <laughs> stinker. <laughs> Got him. Bait and switch. Uh, <laughs> all right. Growing up in the digital age, they know. That's on camera <laughs> forever. <Yep. laughs> all right. Ari, could you kick us off on our round robins of who you are, where are you, who were you, and what was your star of the night? Which, 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 which? Uh, I am. Sh I played a shark here, but I am Akio Ari. Uh, you can find me on Twitch on mon Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And most of the time, I don't say words correctly, clearly. Uh, my star of the night, or, or snark here, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I felt pretty good about going after Audrey multiple times and not backing down and not dying. So I'm going to pat myself on the back for that one. I feel like that was very, very true to Sharkira's nature, so... Glad I stuck with that instead of backing down because I wanted to, but we didn't. <laughs> Burning hands clutch. I agree with that. Mm. It's a strong spell. Yep. Arwen, you're up. I am um, Arwen Atreides. You can find me on Instagram um, at Chelsea of the Cross. Um, I played uh, Chrysanthemum Coriolis and they're at pain as a, as a character, but I, I really enjoy clever traps. I enjoy traps and the on the spot, like problem solving um, they prompt. So I, I'm all, I, I, I enjoy, I enjoy traps. So those were fun tonight. Excellent. Excellent. Gray? Graybeard of Graybeard Severn. Tonight I played uh, Cl Clarton Kishop. And uh, I, I got to give props to the uh, Audrey because, man, that was, that was total creepsville and then when she threw out the spiritual uh, guardians i'm like we are screwed we're so screwed <laughs> i just uh, uh, so yeah uh so yeah the audrey was uh was was awesome uh you can catch me on sunday mornings on my channel and you can find me on tuesdays every other tuesday that is with lantern noir doing our podcast that's me gb 
And Malik, you're up. Yep. Uh, Paul, a.k.a. Malik, uh, you can find – I played Drumir Greyblade. Uh, you can find me. I just posted my Twitter handle. It's my full name. It's really hard to spell, so that's <laughs> probably easier to type out. Um, but uh, my star moment uh, today was well, – while I really enjoyed it, uh, the, the surprise of how the exact uh, nature of the trap was working and then the, the surprise trap as well, I think the uh, – my favorite part was uh, the reunion of uh, our rogue. Uh, uh, Valentina? Valentina. I, my, my handwriting is terrible. Uh, with Valentina and uh, Sophia. It was heartfelt. It was warm. It was lovely. You love to see it. it brings a tear to the eye. Um, and then it, uh, it turned into like something kind of special there. So that's great. Cool. Thank you. And my name is Rob, a.k.a. Lantern Noir, and you find me here. Uh, Sundays and Wednesdays running D&D. Some mornings at 8 o'clock for Coffee and Chaos. And Tuesdays with Greybeard here doing Happy Hour at the Old Timer Tavern, where we talk about a variety of D&D topics we've covered in the last 30 years of gaming. Um, I think Tuesday we're talking about the Matt Mercer effect um, and our various takes on it. Um, and that's me. Um, I want to give a, a huge thank you to that other pond for bringing her amazing community over here earlier this evening in that epic, amazing raid. Um, if you do not follow her, you absolutely have to. She is an amazing human being um, that I am blessed to have at my table. Um, she's in my Wednesday night group, um, and she is. it's just been a, a joy and a half to role play with her. Um, and if you go back through the VODs, you can see that we actually had a cosplay stream last week, and she went all in on it including like using makeup to make a scar and everything so she is just an amazing being um and a lot of fun to have around um i take no credit for the trap you encountered um that came from a book of traps that was out back when i was in high school and that swinging thing was part of the um the the shtick that they had going on um, let me see. How long have they been going? They've, they're only an hour in. Oh, but they're on break. I can't do that. That makes me sad. Let's check these guys. Um, we got to send you somewhere for some more gaming. And if so, if you're enjoying Dungeons and Dragons, there are a handful of places we can go from here. And um, I think I know which one we're going to pick. Um, so you can continue to enjoy great D&D content tonight. Um, I hate to give props to too many other people that I compete with for eyeballs, but I'm going to. These guys are a lot of fun. They go they they stream under the name Dork Tales. It's a set cast that is together all the time for a variety of RPGs. You won't just see D and D, but you'll see um, modern game RPGs. You'll see vampire. You'll see cyberpunk. Um, and quite often they they do the cosplay with it. It's a great group. You're gonna have a blast hanging out over there. And they always start after we do, so you know you want to start the night here. Just saying. San, I saw your whisper. I'm going to talk to Arwen. Um, then we can get in touch by whisper, and you can let me know what kind of sticker you want. We will see you all next time. Until then, uh, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, all I can ask is that please stay safe. <laughs>